ladies and gentlemen. We're going to do 11.1 today. We're going to talk about three-dimensional coordinate systems. And since I've already made a flood by knocking over my water bottle once, I decided to go ahead and put my book down so I don't do it again. So in our book, on page 810, is a great picture of a three-dimensional system. So if you notice, I have the intersections of three planes, okay? So, and it creates the three different axes, and I can draw the axes, I just can't draw the planes. My point then is actually gonna be floating in space, so it would come, usually we show the X axis is coming out of our paper, the Y axis would be horizontal on the paper, and the Z axis would be going up the paper. Another great way to think about a three-dimensional system is where three wall or two walls and a ceiling intersect. So that's a great way to visualize a three-dimensional system. Okay, the next picture in your book, if I can move it over without creating another flood, right here, talks about the rotation of these different systems. So when we do three-dimensional drafting, like in engineering, when we're using software to draw images in three dimensions, we can rotate those axes. The axes always stay at 90 degrees to each other, but then that allows us to look at different facets or different sides of our three-dimensional images. So that's probably one of the hardest parts of learning how to draft in three dimensions is understanding what you're looking at. All right. So now if I get all my toys back together, alrighty. So here are our objectives. We are gonna plot points in three dimensions. Woohoo! We're gonna find the distances and the midpoints between points and segments. We're gonna write equations of spheres, and then we're gonna graph some linear equations. This section's not in our book. They chose to cover a different topic, but I think that for our level of math, this one is probably much better for us to cover. All right, um, so I've shown you the picture in the book. All right, so let me show you how I'm going to expect you to graph. You can rotate your axes, but I want you to graph this way. So we are going to show that the Y axis is horizontal to the page, the Z axis is going vertical to the page. And we're going to call this our x-axis, and this is the axis, it's a little bit weird. It's as if this one is coming out of the page, and although the angles look obtuse, it's hard to show a three-dimensional object on a two-dimensional page, but that x-axis would be coming straight out at you. All right, so the first thing that I'm going to show you how to do is plot points in three dimensions. Okay, when you do this, you have to show what's called a trace, all right? So I'm gonna write must show your trace, okay? All right, so for my first point, I'm gonna plot two, negative three, and three. So since I haven't started with my notes, those coordinates are X, Y, and Z, okay? So those are the order that our coordinates appear. So here's the way we graph in three dimensions. So I'm gonna start at the origin, which would be right here, and I'm gonna go two in the positive x, so this is my x direction, okay? Then I'm gonna go negative three in the y. So if a positive y goes to the right, a negative y is gonna to go to the left. But when I do that, I do that right where I left off on my positive x. So now I'm gonna go one, two, three in the negative y, and then I'm gonna go, I'm gonna kinda of draw another dotted line so you can see my trace and then I'm gonna go up one, two, three in the Z. So this is my point, and I'm just gonna call it A, okay? The hard part about that is, if this is coming out of my page and then coming across, this A is kind of out of the page away from you. A little bit weird to visualize, but not the end of the world if you can't. All right, so let's do B. B is gonna be a negative two, six, and two. So again, I'm gonna start at the origin. Let me get a different colored pen. Okay, so since I start at the origin, all of my toys seem to be falling apart. Bummer, that pen's history. Alrighty, second tries a charm. Okay, I'll do this one in red. So now I'm gonna go a negative two in the x direction. So I'm gonna kinda of show my trace going back this way. 
Okay, so I'm going to go a negative 2 in that direction. I'm going to go 6 in the positive y, so I'm going to kind of sketch 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 in the positive y. Oops, I didn't mean to put a dot yet, so that's not a dot. And then I'm going to go up 1, 2. Okay, so that's an error. And then this would be my point B. Alrighty. So you get the general idea. It's really not a hard process, but when you graph in three dimensions and I'm showing a point, I always have to show my trace. Alrighty, so now let's start doing other things in three dimensions. So first, let's talk about our distance formula. So we remember, hopefully, the distance formula in two dimensions, I'm gonna write 2D down here, is the square root of x2 minus x1 plus y2 minus y1 quantity squared. So it's really not that much different in three dimensions, so my distance formula, I'm gonna write 3D, is the square root of um, x2 minus x1, so again, I'm working with two points, plus the y coordinates, the difference in the y's, oops, that's a one, and then I have to add my z's as well. Okay, so really not a difficult concept, I just have to add that third variable. All right, so if I'm doing an example of this, I want to find the distance between two points. So find distance between, and I'm going to have 1, 0, 2, and then the other point is 2, 4, negative 3. All righty. So now if I get ready to do my distance formula, my distance is going to equal the square root of, and I'm not going to rewrite the formula since it's sitting right there. The difference in the x's, I always let this guy be the 2's, this guy be the 1's. So it's going to be 2 minus 1 quantity squared plus 4 minus 0 quantity squared plus a negative 3 minus 2 quantity squared. If I simplify that math, 2 minus 1 is 1 squared, 4 minus 0 is going to be 4 squared, and a negative 3 and a negative 2 is a negative 5 squared. Okay, Simplify that math just a little bit more and I get 1 plus 16 plus 25 and I end up with the square root of 42. So you would think that 42 would reduce, so let me just show you that it's already in its reduced form. So if you remember how to do a factor t, my prime numbers go on the left, so I'm going to start dividing by 2. I end up with a 21, 3 goes into 21 7 times, 7 goes into 7 1. I have no pairs of numbers, therefore my distance is already in its simplest radical form. All right, so if we did the distance, now we have to do the midpoint, okay? And again, it's not that much different than it was in two dimensions, okay? So my midpoint formula in two dimensions was going to be the average of the x's and the average, ooh, I got a sneeze, of the y's. <coughs> Sorry. So now I'm going to do my midpoint formula. I write it as MDBT, and I'm going to do it in three dimensions. So it's going to be the average of the x's, the average of the y's, and I have to not forget my z's, the average of the z's. Alrighty, so that would be my midpoint formula in three dimensions, okay? If I do a little example, alrighty, so I want to find the midpoint of the line segment, and it's going to join the points. It's going to be 5, negative 2, 3 and it's going to have 0, 4, and 4. Alright, midpoint calculation. Again, I'm not going to rewrite the formula since it's just right there. So if I add these two guys together, I'm going to get 5 plus 0 over 2, negative 2 plus 4 over 2, and 3 plus 4 over 2. So my midpoint is 5 halves, 2 over 2 is 1, Okay, and then 7 halves, and I would just leave it like that. I wouldn't even bother to put it in decimal form because fractions really are your friends. Alrighty, so now let's talk about spheres. Since we just finished, oops, sorry, brain and mouth aren't working at the same speed. 
Since we just finished working with circles, remember that a circle had an equation x minus h quantity squared plus y minus k quantity squared is r squared. Remember the center of my circle was hk and my radius was the square root of r squared. Well again, I'm just gonna add a third dimension. So nothing's really changed, but I'm gonna show you a little graph, so no laughing at my drawing. So here's my handy dandy axes, and I'm gonna have my sphere parked up there. I'm gonna have, here's the sphere. This is how I show, woo, there we go. So that point has coordinates H, K, and we're gonna add J, woohoo. My radius, I'll put it up here, maybe it'll be a little bit easier to see. There would be my radius. So not horrible, you get the general idea. So now my the equation of a sphere is gonna be x minus h, and then it's gonna be y minus k, and then z minus j, quantity squared, again is r squared. My center is gonna be h, k, j, and my radius is gonna be the square root of r squared. Alrighty, so pretty easy concepts. We're just adding a third dimension to math that we already know how to do. So in my example, I want you to write the equation of a sphere, and it's going to have a center of 2, 4, 3, and it's going to have a radius of 3. Well, pretty doggone simple, and I think you can still see your generic equation up there. So my equation, sorry, my paper's crooked, is going to be x minus 2 quantity squared plus y minus 4 quantity squared, and then k, z, sorry, that other variable, minus 3 quantity squared is equal to 9. And there is my equation. Super simple. All right. So since in the last section we did completing the square, we're going to do that again. So this time, it's going to look a little bit different. So I want to find the center and the radius of the sphere. All right, so my equation is going to look like x squared plus y squared plus z squared minus 2x plus 4y minus 6z plus 8 is 0. Holy cow, that's a lot of letters. Alrighty, so I'm going to regroup and then start doing completing the square as I go. So I have x squared minus 2x. I'm going to leave some space. Then I'm going to have y squared plus 4y. Leave some space. And then I'm going to have z squared minus 6z. Leave some space. Move the negative 8 to the other side. Half of 2 is 1, squared is 1, so I'm going to add 1 over here. Half of 4 is 2, squared is 4, so I'm going to add 4 over here. Half of 6 squared, or half of 6 is 3, squared is 9, and I'm going to add 9 over there. And I'm only doing it vertically because I ran out of room. Now I factor, so I get x minus 1, quantity squared, plus y plus 2, quantity squared plus z minus 3 quantity squared is equal to something. What did I get? 6, I believe. 9, 10, 14, yeah. Okay. Alrighty, so then my center is going to be 1, negative 2, 3, and my radius is going to be the square root of 6. Ta-da! So really not hard because we've done all this work before. All we're doing now is just adding another variable. All right, my last new concept is graphing, if I could write, a linear equation in three dimensions. Okay, so if you'll remember, at the beginning of today's little lecture or video or whatever you want to call it, we talked about if you graph a point, you have to show the trace. Well, if I'm going to graph 
an equation, a linear equation in three dimensions, the result is going to be a plane because three points define a plane. So that's why many times cameras have a tripod because a plane is much more sturdy than um, a single point, although nowadays they use singular tripods and that's kind of cool. So let me show you how it works. So I'm going to give you an equation. It's going to be 3x plus 2y plus 4z is equal to 12, and I want you to graph that line in three dimensions. So I'm going to do this by graphing by intercepts. So I'm going to write graphing by intercepts. Okay, and I'm just going to give you a lowdown just in case your brain's stuck since it's the end of the school year. My x-intercept happens when y and z are equal to zero. My y-intercept happens when x and z are zero. And my z-intercept is going to happen when y and x are zero. So it's actually super simple. So I'm going to get my x-intercept. So I'm going to get 3x is 12 because I let y and z both be zero. So I get x is 4. For my y-intercept, I'm going to get 2y is 12 or y is 6. And then for my z-intercept, I'm going to get 4z is 12, z is 3. Okay, so now I'm going to add that information to my handy-dandy three-dimensional graph. Okay, so I would like you to always draw your axes the same way. We're going to put x out here, y on the horizontal, z on the vertical. Technically, this guy is coming out of the page at you. All right, we said our x-intercept was 4, so 1, 2, 3, 4, and I'm going to put a dot, okay? Um, y is equal to 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and I'm going to put a dot. And remember, two points define a line. What? It's actually almost a straight line, so I'm going to draw it like that. My z is 3, 1, 2, 3, okay? So there's 3, and I'm going to add some numbers so you don't yell at me, okay? Then I'm going to connect these two guys. Well, that's not such a straight line. And then I'm going to connect these two guys. Woo, it's really not a straight line. And then I'm going to add some shading, okay? And this is exactly how I will expect you to show your graph. So if you can envision this, so this is the corner of a room, and this is creating a little tent that's providing shade, since we live in Arizona, for that corner. So this is actually in front of the corner. All righty. So just a couple of reminders, if you're going to graph a point in three dimensions, so I'm just going to write 3D, you have to show the trace. That way I know that you're going the correct direction in each of our three directions. And if I'm going to graph an equation, you have to show the plane. Okay. Those are the two that most people seem to get confused. Alrighty, so now let me give you your problems. Pretty short and sweet um, lesson in 3D. We'll say the fun stuff for college. Alrighty, so here's your problems. The first one says plot the point. And remember, I want your axes labeled like I showed you on the last, po on the last problem. Your point's going to be a negative 3, negative 2, negative 1. Second problem, I want you to find the distance between the points. And those points are going to be 2, negative 4, 0, and 0, 6, and negative 3. So I want you to find the distance between those two points. Okay. Third one, I want you to find the midpoint of the line segment. Joining the points. Alrighty. The two points are going to be a negative 1, 5, and a negative 3. And then the other point is 3, 7, negative 1. So I want you to find the midpoint between those two points. Number four, I want you to write the equation of the sphere 
in standard form. Woohoo, we love completing the square. And then I want you to tell me what the center and the radius are. So identify those two things. And then I have one more problem for you. I want you to, is that true? Oh, I lied, all done. Okay, so those are your four problems for the evening. We will graph lines in class where we find the intercepts, but I think you guys can manage that. So good luck with your problems and I will see you tomorrow.